Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your portfolios, projects, and or resumes. Special thanks to Muhammad, whose portfolio on GitHub I'm gonna go through and review today. Yeah, I couldn't you know, do any of these without people volunteering uh, for me to go through their stuff. So if you would actually like to personally volunteer, feel free to email me at keng.ds at gmail.com. It's linked in the description and in the comment section. Also feel free to comment uh, about your portfolio and let me know down there as well that you'd like me to review your stuff. Before I get going you know, further into this, if, if you enjoy this content, please like it. And if you wanna see the next video of this, which I upload every Monday, Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications to be alerted when that's posted. Without further ado, let's jump into Muhammad's portfolio here. So I like this. He has a good picture. He has a nice little uh, about him. You know, he's an electrical engineer and data scientist. And I, I like that he has some kind of uh, personal things in there that he likes photography, chess, archery, and soccer. I think those are the exact types of things that you want to have in your portfolio. Um, or a little about me things in your portfolio that, that can say a lot about you. You know, those are things that you can connect on and they, they tell me a little bit about him. You know, if someone likes chess, I generally think of them as a thinker and I, I, I can't say kind of enough good things about that kind of short blurb that he has there. So he wanted me to look into this country GDP prediction project. So let's take a look into that. And the first thing I always look at is the readme. So this README is, is very, very good compared to some of the, um, you know, so the, some of the ones that I've seen while doing this. Again, I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing if, if you haven't figured out the README yet, but that is something that everyone should work on and work to improve. So there's a good description of the data. I like that he has a project goal. I think that that's something that can really go a long way. And I like that he includes an image there. You know. These are all things uh, that I, I speak quite a lot about. He also has some findings, which is really good to include there as well. If I'm a recruiter, I go in and see this, and I realize basically immediately what this project is about. I would almost even put the project's goal at the very top, just so that you know the first thing that a recruiter sees is what this project is about. I think it's fine that he did this one off of Kaggle. Of course, I always recommend that you have at least one or two projects where you collect your own data as well. So let's actually go into the workbook here. Seems like he's been following my advice about writing a good readme and keeping the goal of the project at the top. I really like that. He imports all of these relevant libraries. There's some good stuff related to understanding and evaluating the data. He goes through and fixes the data types. I think that's perfectly fine if pretty much all of them are numeric. I don't think you technically need to go through and change these to category from object. It kind of just reads it in as a string and you can do that in the one hot encoding, but I, I like how clean and neat that this is and it makes logical sense to go and do that. If you're in a crunch for time, you should probably make sure to just transfer all of the numeric ones to floats or ints. But regardless, this is very well done on that end. We kind of go through and describe the data, that's fine. When we're looking at the number of null values, I think it's a little bit more meaningful to do it as a percent. So this is a pretty small data set. I think there's only 227. So, you know, if we're looking at this and we're looking, oh, 22, is pretty small, but that's actually like 10% of the data. So we want to be aware of how this looks. To, to do a percent, we would just take this value and divide it by however many it was, 221, I believe, 227. You probably know how many countries there are. Uh, regardless, I like that a lot. This is a cool visual. I've never really seen uh, too many things like this for showing how many null values there are in, in each, uh, in each uh, feature and he does actually have the percent down here so you know that is again pretty much how i would go about evaluating the nulls in a data frame one thing that i don't think i see is some distributions to understand how if the data is normally distributed or not that could be relevant 
if he's going to be doing some regression here. So I would probably advise him to maybe put in a couple histograms or box plots. Those are things that anyone looking in will, will be expecting to see because they're very useful in understanding the shape and the nature of the data. Aside from that, I think these are all fine. Looking at some of the undefined features, cleaning some of the data. This is really in depth actually. And that is one of the, the powers that you have when you do have a small data set. You can look at each of the individual cases. I would recommend that Muhammad also does an analysis on a fairly big data set to show some of your range there. But you know, if you're working with small data, I think it, it does pay dividends to go in and explain a lot of the little things that you see, because with small data, that is significantly more relevant. You know, if, if this data set was a, a hundred thousand uh, different rows, we wouldn't want to go in and evaluate all of the individual features. But because it's only, again, 227, there's a good reason to do that. And that makes this analysis a bit more robust. So I like that he went into that depth by understanding the nature of the data and understanding the nature of the problem. So looks like he imputed all of the missing data, mostly with means, which is perfectly fine. Um, I would probably like him to explain why he chose to go with mean over median. He might have done that, but if, if he hasn't, because I'm only kind of skimming over this, I would recommend that he just explain that differentiation. You know, if there weren't any real outliers, that would be a reason to go with mean. Um, I, I personally like to go with median for most things, but uh, again, if there's just reasonable logic behind it, that is what matters. Uh, I, I like the core plot, it's well-sized. You know, one thing you can do is, so I mean, if we look across this axis, the top half is always a reflection. So we, we can just make these uh, top squares white. Some people prefer that look because it's a little bit less confusing, especially if there's this many different features. But this really tells us a lot. We can see what's correlated, you know, the area and the population. It uh, looks like phones and service. Phones and birth rate are really negatively correlated. I think this really tells us a lot. And he goes into some explanations down here, which I also really like. You know, one thing that I think I saw is just a small um, typo here. So this should be investigating undefined features. Uh, that's something I'd be, I'd be careful of. Obviously, if you have more text, there's a higher likelihood that you have some typos, but we, we really wanna make sure we're going through and, and at least for the headers, making sure that uh, we, we don't have any typos or anything like that there. Again, that can be kind of hard because there isn't a you know, text editor built in. So um, let's, you know, I would just be careful about that and uh, make sure that you go back and correct that in when you're, when you're revising this. I really like these kind of scatter plots. They're powerful to me because of how small the data is. We can really see meaningful trends if they are apparent. You know, this, this is something, it, you know, that's a pretty clear trend. This is a, a fairly clear trend as well here. So, you know, all of these plots I think are very good. I would keep this up and, you know, this is the type of depth that I really like to see in a project where you're not collecting the data. So, you know, if you're not spending as much time on the data collection, I think you should be spending more time in the exploratory analysis of the model building. So the depth of this project is really good. Um, if you were even to dial it back a little bit, I think that that would be okay as well. But it's clear that Muhammad really put a lot of time in this and I think it shows in, in the level of detail and in some of the findings. Uh, I think the regional analysis is pretty cool. And this is the, the, um, the graph that he shows here. Obviously Western Europe and Northern America, the GDP is, is going to be higher. Um, I really like these hex plots. You know, I think that 
for someone who's not a data scientist, they could be a little bit different to difficult to interpret. But for someone who is in the field, they're pretty cool to see. So if we're looking at this, I assume that this type of histogram is the volume of results. And then we actually see the concentration as we go across that way. So this is a, a cool feature and you don't really see, oh, I don't really see that many hex plots. So it's kind of refreshing to see a new type of visual. I would consider putting one of these in the readme. I, I think that it looks cool and it's different enough that uh, it would catch someone's attention. So now we're starting the actual model building phase. I will say that that EDA is one of the more in-depth ones that I've seen when reviewing these projects. I really liked that. I would maybe do just a little summary at the end of, of the whole EDA phase, just to say like, hey, these were the three biggest findings that I had here. So it transforms the regions, that's all fine. And then he makes a couple different data sets. So it looks like he does one where he does no scaling, he does scaling, he selects specific features, and then he does specific feature selections with scaling. So I like the use of linear regression. That's almost always my like baseline model is this multiple linear regression and we see if we can improve upon this. So he compares all the models. It looks like the feature scaling with selected variables is relevant. I personally like the uh, stats models OLS linear regression package because it spits out all of the uh, coefficients uh, uh, for, for each of the features. So you can see their feature importance, uh, you know, and, and how much each individual feature contributes to predicting GDP in this case. If you're doing linear regression, you almost always at this point do it for interpretability. So I'd really like to maybe see that, that printout of what the coefficients are when you're using this model. Obviously, we're getting some really wonky R squared values, especially in the first two where you're using all the features, and that's probably because of multicollinearity. So I think that it's, uh, it would be good to note that that is why you chose those specific features as well. He does a very similar analysis for uh, support vector regression, which I think is, is also pretty good. And the cool thing that he does here is he compares the scaled data and not scaled data. And that gives us a little bit more understanding of the model. So I think that that's pretty cool. Obviously the feature scaling didn't really have much of an impact here, but it's nice to see that he's doing that as kind of an experiment with this analysis. So he does a grid search with it, which I think is a reasonable thing to do. And it looks like he gets, um, a little bit, you know, a little bit better results. I'm kind of looking mostly here at root mean square error. Next, he does a random forest, which looks like it produces significantly better results here. I almost always in regressions that I do use a linear model. I also use like a normalized linear model, like a ridge or lasso regression, and then I compare that with a random forest. If I'm feeling particularly spontaneous, I'll use some sort of a neural net. But I think with the small amount of data here, it doesn't make a ton of sense to use a neural net. So I think that the approach that Muhammad has taken is pretty solid. So he fits it um, and optimizes it with grid search. It's a good practice and then he does a gradient boosted model. So one thing that he doesn't do is build a composite model, maybe looking at a linear model combined with a nonlinear model like a random forest. I think that could be an interesting you know, uh, expansion to this analysis. I, here he shows the feature importances and I think that that's really good, but the feature importances or you know, the, the coefficients that come from a linear model can arguably tell us more. So, you know, basically feature importances in a, in a, a tree-based model, we can tell, they tell us how much influence that variable has on the model. There isn't necessarily a direction associated with that. I mean, in this case, we can assume a direction of, of phones in GDP, but it isn't implied. I mean, it isn't, um, 
It is an implied, yeah. So with the linear model, we, we are clearly given a direction of, of which way the feature impacts the model. So we optimize the grid search here. I think that that is pretty good. And then we come to our conclusion. So overall, I think that this was a really in-depth and well put together analysis. One thing I would like to see for the conclusion is maybe a table that compares the different models on the results. Right here, we just see the best model, which is nice, but it would be really cool to see all the models compared side to side. That gives us the best understanding of the process. I think that this type of analysis is more for understanding. I mean, we, we understand GDP as, as, as a whole uh, pretty well, you know, as, as like a civilization. So this is more to understand the intricacies of the models and the ex exploratory nature of the data than it is to get some new finding. So if you are actually focusing on the models in that case, we should be able to compare them really clearly. I really like that he has a future work section. I think that that's a very good practice in general as well. You can go into a little bit depth. I mean, you can shoot for the moon with the, with the future work or what you'd like to get out of this or how you'd like to continue this uh, because, you know, it's, you know, you're not actually going to do it per se. I mean, you could, but you can talk about some really cool things and that gets a lot of people thinking and that is, that is totally fine. So thank you again, Mohammed. I, I think that this was a very good analysis. There are a lot of really positive things a lot of people can take from this. My general sentiment is that you might want to just summarize your conclusions a little bit better. You might also want to show just a, a couple different visuals for understanding the shape of the data. But overall, really solid. And I hope uh, a lot of other people can, can take some direction from this type of analysis. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.